Gabapentin started life as a seizure drug. I started using it back in the 1990s, actually. And for a while, we mostly used it for seizures, but the drug has found its way into treatment for lots of other things, particularly pain syndromes, but also some psychological conditions, and uh, actually a pretty large variety of other things. So it's very commonly used. In fact, now in the United States, it's used much more for things that are not seizures than are seizures. A lot of people want to know about the side effects of gabapentin. I'm going to break it down into a couple, three buckets. The common bucket, and pretty common for seizure drugs. Not quite so common, but you look out for it. And then there's this long list of weird things that have happened to a few people here and there. Sometimes these unusual side effects are very dramatic, and you, and you hear about them, people report them, even though they're not very common. Uh, one example would be uh, unusual abnormal movements that a person can't control. Um, that's a, a known side effect of gabapentin. I wrote the original description scientific paper many years ago about that. So I've seen uh, probably more than most people. And even I say it's really rare. It may be dramatic, but it's really uncommon. So if you look online, and I'm not going to go through every possible side effect, okay? If you look online, you'll see a long list of things, because any unusual side effects somebody could have, they probably have had, and they uh, have reported it somewhere, perhaps. The common things are what I call, sort of casually, I refer to as the drunk, tired, and stupid. Can't think, uh, memory's worse, kind of off balance, sluggish, feel like you're not very sharp in the head. So that's typical of any seizure drug. And the higher you go with the dose, the more likely you are to run into that. Uh, the uh, other kind of middle of the road set of side effects is also fairly common with any seizure drug that affects how brain cells fire. Any drug that changes how your brain cells fire, which by definition includes all seizure drugs, can change your mood or your behavior or you know, how you think or something like that. Now, Sometimes it's, a lot of times, it can change it for the worse, but sometimes it's actually for the better, which is why psychiatrists very commonly use some of the seizure medications, for example, to try to regulate mood. Uh, or uh, seizure drugs, not so much gabapentin, can be used to reduce migraines, for example. So there's that drunk, tired, off balance, feel like you're not so sharp. There's the change in thinking, behavior, mood, uh, irritability, uh, and less commonly, increased suicidal feelings have been reported with lots of seizure drugs. Uh, it's not super common, but a lot of the drugs will have that at, time, at times. So this is the kind of big stuff that I say to, for, for people to look out for. Uh, the other stuff, these very unusual things, I always, I, you know, I, I point out to my patients, um, everybody's wired a little differently. And even though on average we can sort of talk about if you put this chemical in, this is kind of how things on average are going to change, but not every person's average. In fact, a, a lot of us aren't. And so when you're starting a drug like gabapentin, you got to keep your eyes open because maybe you're going to have one of these unusual things that goes on and you, you keep your eyes open for that. And if something seems to be not going very well or it's unusual, you need to talk about that with the person who's prescribing the medicine. Gabapentin is a remarkably non-toxic compound. That's not to say you can't have side effects, even serious side effects or quite impressive side effects that are very troublesome. But the toxicity in the sense of being able to kill off your kidneys or fry the liver or cause death is really remarkably low. Um, so, of course, you can become allergic to gabapentin. Typically, that's a rash, just like most other medications. A lot of the other uh, people I see who, who say they are allergic to gabapentin have really what I would call non-allergy side effects, meaning that they uh, might have stomach upset or headache or tremors or something like that. But the, uh, the mechanism of the side effect is not actually an allergy. Uh, when allergy, of course, is the immune system reacting.
With every drug, there's something we call the half-life. It's the amount of time it takes for half of the drug to be eliminated from the body, presuming that you're not putting more drug in. And that's a good measure for kind of how long does a medicine hang around in the bloodstream. The half-life of gabapentin is generally in the range of about eight hours or so. So if you had a level of uh, 100 and you didn't take any more, eight hours later would be about 50 and another eight hours later would be about 25. So you get how it works. Because it has a fairly short half-life, they have developed a time-release form, which is more slowly absorbed, and so you don't have to take the pills as often. It's rather more expensive, so in the United States it's harder to get that medicine for patients. Presuming that somebody uses the regular gabapentin, very often they will wind up taking it three times a day, because every eight hours is about 24 hours in total. But there's a lot of variation. Some people only have pain, say, at night, and during the day they don't have very much, and so they use the gabapentin at bedtime. Because a short half-life is a problem when you want a steady state throughout the 24 hours, you would think about taking it frequently or using time release, but, but pain isn't always uh, the same around the clock or whatever someone's taking it for. It could be seizures even. Uh, where the person only has seizures at night, for example, well, there are cases where you give them a short-acting seizure medication, like gabapentin, kind of load things up at the end of the day, and then by morning things are largely out of the system, or at least substantially. So you can see how the half-life of gabapentin is a two-edged sword. Sometimes it's a great thing, depends on the, on the case. Other, other times it's not so, so great. We just have to work around it. Gabapentin started life as a seizure drug. I started using it back in the 90s, I think, for seizures. And for a while, that's really mostly what it was used for. It has found its way into treatment for pain, treatment for some psychiatric or psychological conditions, treatment for a number of other disorders. So it's very commonly used in the United States. It's actually not that commonly used for seizures these days. Not that it's particularly bad, but there's a lot of other things with... Gabapentin started life as a seizure drug. I started using it back in the 1990s, actually. And for a while, we mostly used it for seizures, but the drug has found its way into treatment for lots of other things, particularly pain syndromes, but also some psychological conditions, and uh, actually a pretty large variety of other things. So it's very commonly used. In fact, now in the United States, it's used much more for things that are not seizures than are seizures.